Have you ever wondered what type of stateroom you should book for your next cruise? Well, join us in this video. We're going to explore all the different types of staterooms and what each one's pluses and minuses are. So one of the most common questions that we've seen on our YouTube channel and even just talking to friends and family is, you know, what kind of stateroom do you choose and, and why? And over the years, we've chosen a variety of, of different ones, depending on the ship, depending on the cost, depending on the itinerary, uh, and of course, our own personal preference. Yeah, so today what we want to do is go through and uh, I think we'll go in order of the type of stateroom that we've experienced on cruise ships and kind of tell you a little bit about what we found out and why we moved to the different next type of stateroom. And then also things that we've learned since to help kind of save us some money and kind of really dial it in for our type of cruising. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Right. And definitely comment and ask questions below because uh, this is always a lively discussion amongst people. Okay, so, 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 so starting off, I have to say the very first cruise that we took, we had an ocean view uh, cabin. Now it took some convincing for me to get Mr. Canuck to want to go on his very first cruise. I don't have to convince him anymore, well, but it took a lot to get him to want to try a cruise. So, well, I, uh, I had really bad, still do to this day, actually motion sickness in a vehicle. I can't sit in the back seat, you know, that type of thing. I've been on ferries before and been sick from the motion. So, uh, very worried about motion sickness on a ship. So I was ruled out cruise ships for me just because I'm motion sick, I can't possibly do it, so. Now, if you are someone that is prone to motion sickness, when you're booking a cabin, it's pretty important um, to try to book a location as opposed to the type of cabin is what we have found. So midship and often lower on the deck, it's much a smoother ride and less motion. So if that's a concern for you, that is one thing to keep in mind when you're booking your cabin. So getting into the actual type of cabins. So our first experience was Ocean View. Now I had decided Ocean View was a good choice for me because it was kind of, wasn't too expensive. And I thought to myself, I can see the horizon out the window. And that's usually a trick I use in the car. So I thought, okay, as long as I can see that horizon, that, that where the sea meets the sky, I'm going to be fine. And then I realized that life on a cruise ship is not sitting in my room staring out the window all day long. So really it didn't, didn't work for me. I, I really didn't have too bad of motion sickness anyways. But uh, choosing a stateroom based on ocean sickness, you know, maybe location like Jill said is a good idea. But really thinking that's going to overcome motion sickness. I think there's so much going on the ship and you're elsewhere on the ship. That's not really a great reason to choose a, a stateroom type. So ocean view. We quickly decided it was nice to have the view. But one of the flaws in ocean views lately on the new ships is it's the very bottom of the ship. Right, and so when we first started cruising, Ocean View were, the majority of the cruise ship were Ocean View. There was some balconies, but generally only suites, and we couldn't afford suites at that time, especially. Uh, so that was sort of out for us. So Ocean View was sort of the, the uh, suite spot that most people had booked back in the, with that style of ship. And I'm talking, um, you know, the cruise ships that hold a thousand to fifteen hundred people, much smaller than most cruise ships nowadays. Yeah, so the ocean view used to be kind of that mid space between interior. If you don't want to do interior, you didn't have the money or you didn't want to bump up to a balcony, ocean view is the middle. But this current age of cruise ships, to me, it feels like that's kind of the bottom of the ship and kind of the, the last room I want to be in down in that part of the ship and having to go up and, and travel quite a distance to all the different floors. So, right. so ocean views has kind of dropped in my, my perception of that's not really the, the middle of the road anymore. And so uh, we, when we went away from Ocean View. But there are some pl pluses to it. So, you know, having natural light yeah. as opposed to if you're, if you're debating between an interior and an Ocean View, there's something to be said for the Ocean View where you wake up every morning with the sunrise coming into your cabin. Um, and it just sort of sets your tone for your day. Yeah, and, I, and some of the older ships, Ocean View also meant that the room was a little bit bigger and you sometimes had a sofa or like a love seat size uh, sofa. And uh, so that was another reason that we liked the ocean view because we didn't want to be kind of in a smaller room, kind of crammed in without a, a place to sit in the room. So yeah. some of the older ships, again, newer ships, that doesn't seem to be the case. A lot of ocean room view rooms now don't have a sofa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. When it, when it uh, square footage comes into account, when you're changing from an interior to an ocean view to a balcony. And so we always play that game too, as to does it have a sofa? 
in it so because if it does then you know you've got a little bit of more square footage a little more walking around room than if you just have a bed in your room yeah so ocean view for me my least favorite type of room i think on a cruise ship now wow really yep for sure so the next one we decided that after ocean view we were upgrading mm. we are going to be balcony people <laughs> We booked a long run of balconies. Mm -hmm. It was advantageous to at the time. The Canadian dollar was equal with the American dollar. So we were getting a deal on cruises at the time. We thought we're going to go big and we're going to go balconies. And, and something strange happened on a balcony. You know, Jill eventually realized that it wasn't really worth it if you didn't use your balcony. Yeah. So balcony rooms, I'll say when you're traveling as a couple, they can be very nice. You uh, tend to use them a little bit, um, you know, enjoy that one-on-one -on -one time, just you and your spouse. Uh, but what I found was when we started cruising with friends or a group of people, I realized the first cruise that we went on with another couple that I myself personally never once stepped foot on the balcony. I was, you know, in my room to get changed, showered and go meet up at a different lounge or a venue or something like that, or I was sleeping. But to actually spend the afternoon in my cabin on my balcony, it didn't happen, not once. No, and uh, I like the balconies, you know, first thing in the morning, getting up, getting some fresh air, maybe you're coming into port, you know, kind of watching the waves go by, maybe killing time while Jill's doing her hair, that type of thing. But... We're not really sit on the balcony in the middle of the day and kill hours at a time, people. Right. A lot of balconies, especially on the newer ships, are also a lot smaller than they used to be. Mm -hmm. So you can maybe sit there with a chair and your knees are almost against the glass, but you're not really lounged out relaxing on a nice big balcony. You have to really kind of upgrade to get to that experience. Yeah, so if you want to lounge, you just lounge on the pool deck where you don't have to pay for that. Um, but the other advantage, though, of a balcony is if you're traveling with someone that you're very close to, and we've experienced this when we've traveled with families and we've had two balconies side by side, then you can request to have that partition in the middle of them opened up. And so then you sort of have an extended bal balcony. And that's nice as long as, you know, you're comfortable with who you're traveling with and, you know, you can meet out on the balcony for morning coffee and plan your day or have a nightcap before you go to bed at night. So sometimes a balcony is a plus. Yeah, that's kind of like having an adjoining room, but the adjoining part is the balcony, not the actual door in the room. Right. Yeah, and usually there's a little more room in a balcony. Again, you're back to most ships, you're going to have some sort of a sofa or sitting area as well as the bed. Not all, but most. And overall, the room has, has more square footage than, say, a, an ocean view or an interior. Right. So that, that was our experience with balconies. We were balcony people all the way, but then... Prices started to rise. We started to look really hard at inside cabin and we thought, can we do it? We'd never done inside. We, we were, were very afraid of we're it. Afraid, I was afraid of the ocean sickness. We were afraid of the small square footage. We were afraid of the dark cave-like experience. I'm not a very good sleeper. And so I was afraid that I would be waking up at two in the morning and think that it must be seven in time to get up. So that was one of my fears with it. We made the jump from balcony to interior. And we did it thinking, you know, we, we've, we've discussed this in one of our, our polls on our community channel lately on YouTube was we thought for what we're paying for a balcony, we can get at least two cruises an inside interior, sometimes even three right. for the price of what balconies were. And we thought, do we want more cruise experiences or do we just want the perfect balcony, you know, going big type of cruise? And we decided to give the interior a try. Right. So, yes, we did an interior the very first time and it was because we what we had done. We booked a very uh, economical cruise and thought we'll give it a try and if we hate it we'll never do it again. But we both were pleasantly surprised at how much we liked it. Yeah right? definitely the lack of daylight messes you up a little bit. Like I slept in more than I'd ever slept in my life which Jill thinks is a really good thing. Yes because he's usually even when we're on a cruise ship up by 5 36 a.m. So when he says he was sleeping in he slept till 7 maybe 7 30. Um, so yeah, so that was nice. We did do that a little yep. bit. Missed half my day, but yeah, I was, a, I was able to sleep in really well. And, and the other thing is the whole motion and the boat moving thing. Never really noticed it. If anything, I noticed it less motion in the, in the, in the interior room. So I'm not sure whether there's something to that, that maybe if you can't see the horizon and you don't have that, that maybe mm -hmm. your, your brain just adjusts to it. I'm not sure, but, uh, but yeah, but we were pleasantly surprised square footage. You know, it wasn't a big deal to us because what we ended up just what we ended up experiencing was that 
we started to cruise a little bit differently. Right. We, we didn't go back to the balcony room. We didn't go back to the ocean view and stare at the window and kill time in our room. We thought, there's nothing here but sleeping, showering, and you know, getting ready for a night out on the boat. And, uh, and we didn't use the room as much. We definitely, right. We definitely used the, every facility on the, on the ship more, the lounges and, and different venues. And we were out of our room more for sure. Yep, I remember being on cruises where we deliberately, you know, certain venues that were close by, they kind of became our extended cabin. Right. You know, we were on a, a Norwegian ship that we'd come out, we'd go down the hallway and out some doors, and we'd be on that, that open deck that was right there in the middle of the ship that went all the way around, and it was like having our own balcony. We can come down and go either side of the ship, and, and it was only steps from With our room. Great big large loungers that we yep. could sit in or we could walk around and see wonderful views as you were coming into port. So yeah, that worked well for us. Yep. And we we can do the interiors, but one of the things that we've we've adjusted to now is we've realized from booking enough cruises that there's a little category that's kind of in the middle of all those in there and and that is the obstructed ocean view. Most cruise lines will give you an obstructed ocean view for the price of an interior. Mm -hmm. So you're not in a black room. No. You still have natural light coming in. Mm -hmm. You might be staring literally at the side of a lifeboat, or you might be kind of peeking between lifeboats, depending on what cabin you're in and what ship you're on. But we found that to be a nice compromise. We had the natural light. Uh, we didn't have the perfect view, but usually you're in a better spot in the ship than a normal ocean view as well. You're not at the bottom of the ship. You're at least what, what I find with the obstructed ocean views uh, is at least you know if it's raining when you're at a port of call and you know True. whether you're going to head to the beach right now or whether if you're going off on ship for an excursion whether you need an umbrella with you or or whatever you're not surprised leaving your room yeah, for, yeah. So. Our, our last experience on the Holland america ship with the interior room yeah we have made good use of the tv bow cameras to see if it was raining or sunny or windy and right. and it's really nice to just to be able to open the curtains and even if you've seen a light boat you can see is, what the is, is, is like the weather outside. bad good yeah what's it look like out there so so that's definitely an advantage of the obstructed and and on some ships, like uh, the Norwegian, the obstructed ocean view, put us in a great part of the ship where we were just steps away to go down to the local bar, the pub, you know, the main atrium. So mm -hmm. sometimes if you poke around and see where those rooms are, you can find out they're in really good spots on the ship that work out well for navigating throughout the day. Yes, for sure. So we've, we've never done a suite we yet. We haven't. So we we've been for them. <laughs> yeah, we, we visited. Norwegian. <laughs> we've, we have visited other people that have had suites. We've yes. taken a look to see what the, what the cabins look like. We've never put the money out. We're all about the value to get as many cruises as we can. Maybe the day will come when we're slowing down a little bit. We just want luxury and being a suite with a butler and that whole experience. And right. it might happen one day. I'm not sure <laughs> if that day is coming soon. We, but we've really learned to love life on the ship. And the ship really becomes an extension of our, our cabin. Our cabin is like our bedroom in the house. You know, and the right. lounges might be like the living room of my house. Right. <laughs> you know, and, but the ship's the house. And, and the theater's sure. the rec room, right? The ship becomes an extension when you have kind of a smaller room where you don't really feel like hanging out in all day long. Right. So, and I think from that, we're giving a better cruising experience. And recently in Holland America, we started getting to the strategy of booking a cabana. So that was kind of like having a balcony that was much bigger with a hot tub and it was full and, service. And did have butler service, yeah. So that was our compromise with Hull in America. That's why we've done the cabanas as often we've had is because we've done interior rooms with them. So. Yeah, so there's there's lots of options and everybody cruises their way. Um, some people, they need to have a balcony, they want to have a balcony, they go out there, they have coffee, they have breakfast there, they, they spend their day out there reading a book and you know, that's the cabin for you. And uh, other people, you just kind of want to be out and about and having a drink or nibbling or you know sliding down the water slide. So. Tell us what type of cabin you prefer and what you have booked in the past and are you willing to try a different uh, cabin? Let us know what you think. Comment and uh, yeah. you know, join in the conversation. Yeah, I know there's a lot of you out there that have never tried an interior because we were in that boat. We were, we, were, mm -hmm. we were like, oh, we don't know we if we could do this, but uh, yeah, no. yeah. We, we've tried it. We've been there and we'll, we'll go back for sure. We so. will for sure. Yeah, so yeah, comment below, let us know what you think, and uh, thanks for joining. If you haven't subscribed yet, then uh, certainly subscribe to the channel. We have uh, lots of vlogs coming up. We're heading to Europe real soon, and uh, lots of content coming your way this summer. And we have a variety of cabins booked for that, too, so <laughs> yeah. you'll have to check out what we have. Yep, yeah. we're actually going back to a balcony eventually. So Eventually. So a long time, <laughs> but we've got some balcony rooms coming up, as well as some uh, obstructive views and a little bit of everything. Yeah. So take care, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.